Today we're still in this series, Truth Be Told. Who among you here, you've been attending here and you've been enjoying this series? You're not enjoying? I'm going to tell Pastor Rev, no. Amen. And actually, uh, the goal of this series is for us to better appreciate and understand the parables of Jesus in the Bible. And as we, you know, experience the truth behind every story, we get to apply it in our day-to-day -day lives. And this afternoon, we're going to talk about the parable of the Good Samaritan. And basically, this has something to do with loving our neighbor. So among you here, you love your neighbors? Come on now, okay? And I believe this is a reality for us. And maybe some of you, this is a concern. Because when we talk about our neighbors, diba, you, you were reminded of your neighbors. And some of you, you've already gave them a nickname, diba? When you heard this couple na pag nag-aaway, ah, ito na naman yung mag-asamang nag-aaway. Or maybe you were, you're like that. You're the couple who always fight in your community. Okay? Or maybe you're not like that. You, you have a, a neighbor who's like this. You know, yung parang everyday na lang laging may party sa bahay nila. Parang you don't understand. Parang laging yung, yung the, the, the music is so loud. Laging may video, okay? And all that. So for some reason, you hate the idea of living beside this person. But not all neighbors are kind of negative naman, di ba? We have naman neighbors na who's good to us, right? Di ba? Sometimes you smell the food that they're cooking and you're thinking, I wonder what he's cooking, you know, I hope he would invite me so I can, you know, eat what he's cooking. And maybe some of you, you have neighbors na every time it's Christmas, they are ge so generous, di ba? No? Kids will line up right in front of their gate and you're thinking, pwede ba akong pumila para makareceive doon ako ng aguinaldo and all that. But the thing about neighbors is this, the way we relate to them, the way we treat them is just dependent on how they behave, right? If you have a good neighbor, it's easy for you to be good with them. You will treat them back just like that. You will love them. But if you're living beside someone you're having a hard time with, for sure, you're frustrated and you hated that person. Given a chance you would transfer to a different community, right? Umamin na tayo, okay lang yan, we're in the church, okay? And actually, when, I talk, when we talk about neighbors, it's not only in our community. It has something to do with the people we deal every day. Diba? With your office, in your office, with your boss, in the campus, even in the church. It's easy for you to, you know, to be good with someone who's good at you, but it's hard for you to relate with someone who has a lot of issues, who's so prideful, and all that. So when the Bible talks about loving your neighbor, what does it mean to love my neighbor? And the question is this, and who is my neighbor? Okay, sino ba to? Uh, ito ba yung nasa community ko lang, or yung katabi ko sa church, or the people that I can easily love? So we'll be studying this passage of Scripture in Luke chapter 10, Starting in verse 25. So if you have your Bibles with you, open it with me so we can study it together. And it says there, And behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to test, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Just to give you a background, during this time, you know, Jesus has a growing number of followers. Because he started doing his ministry there's this group of people, you know, started believing that this is the Messiah, this is the Christ, and He is the way, the truth, and the life. And what's interesting, there's this group of people who were the Pharisees because Jesus has a growing number of followers. They were threatened. The Pharisees were threatened because before they were the ones who were teaching the law. Now there's this guy, a lawyer, Okay, during their time, if you're a lawyer, you're an expert to the law of God, which means you know the detail of the law of God. And during their time, they have 613 laws. Imagine that, okay? 
And what's interesting, if you can see in this passage of Scripture, he asked Jesus, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And worse, actually, he was putting Jesus to test. Imagine, ah, he knows the Word of God, but he missed out Jesus in the Word of God. And when I think about that, it's a reality for some of us here or for some people who knows the Word of God. Why is that? You know, it's one thing to know the Word of God, memorize the Word of God, but it's another thing for you to experience the person behind the Word of God. So we can't just put Christianity in our mind. Ah, alam ko na yung Bible. You know, I've memorized the Bible from cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation. I can even draw the maps. Our tendency is we'll become prideful when it's about what we know about the Word of God. And it's happening here. They know the law of God, but they miss out Jesus. They know about the coming of the Messiah, but now this is Jesus right in front of their eyes. And they were asking and they were testing him. Now I like what Jesus replied. It's, he replied, he said to him, What is written in the law? How do you read it? You know, Jesus is so full of wisdom because, yes, he's 100% God, 100% man. Now what he did, because he knows that this guy is trying to test him, and this guy is an expert to the law, and then he just go back to the law. So what's written in the law? What's written in the Bible? How do you read it? How do you interpret, uh, interpret it? Now in verse 27, he answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Which means the lawyer, the expert to the law, he knows what he's talking about. He knows the law. When the lawyer summarized the law into this, you know, uh, theologian would say, and in their time, they would say this is Shema. Because they have 613 laws, and for you to summarize everything, it's stated like this. So which means he knows what is the law. He knows what God commanded him to do because he's a lawyer. But in verse 28, and he said to him, this is Jesus. You have answered correctly. So alam mo naman pali. You know how to get to heaven. So do this. Gawin mo lang yan. Just love God and love your neighbors. But it's interesting, in verse 21, at uh, 29, but he desiring to justify himself, to make himself righteous. He want to point out to Jesus, hindi, tama naman to, I'm doing right, I'm following the law. And he said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And maybe some of you are thinking, so sino ba talaga yung neighbor ko? Diba? Sino ba yung dapat kong mahalin? I should consider. Is this the people I'm having a hard time with? Now in verse 30, this is where the story started. Now here's the parable of the good Samaritan. Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay, picture that with me for a moment. And he fell among robbers and who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. So there's this guy, you know, he's on our journey, maybe he's on a vacation or doing something, or maybe he's going to meet someone. But suddenly, there's this group of people who rob him, who, who, uh, who got his money, and all that. Okay? Na-experience yun na bang ma-hold up? Okay? Di ba parang medyo, ah, yung the feeling of pressure and all that. And actually, in this parable, we're going to study four characters. Number one is this, the bandits or the bad guys, okay? And when I think about that, sometimes we're not as bad as that guy, you know. Hindi naman tayo hold up, di ba? Hindi naman tayo magnanakaw. But for some reason, we can be guilty of that just like this. You know, we connect because we can get something from that person. What do I mean by that? Have you ever experienced this? You know, all of a sudden, there's this guy 
parang you knew from the past, and then bigla siyang tumawag sa'yo, Hey, how are you? I heard you've been attending Victory. That's good. Oh, kamusta ka na? You know, ah, so, talaga, bait-bait mo na, ganyan-ganyan. And then suddenly, ah, pwede ba ako mangutang? All of a sudden, he would try to get, he, he was connecting to you because he wants to get something from you. And when I think about that, I hope we're not like that. We come to church not to get something from God, but because we've already received our ultimate blessing, and that is Jesus Christ. So my encouragement is the reason why we worship because we respond to God's goodness. We don't connect to get, we don't connect to God just to get something from God. We connect to God because He is God, and we have a relationship with Him. Is that an amen? Come on. Now let's continue on the story. That's why in verse 31, now here's another character. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. This is interesting. Because kung i-imagine natin today, yung priest sa panahon natin, okay, it's like Pastor Christian or the pastors here in Victory, okay? Because I'm a campus missionary, I'm exempted. No, I'm just kidding, okay? So it's like the pastor. They were the one who's in charge, teaching the law, preaching the law. And what's interesting, he saw the guy who was wounded, who was robbed, who was half dead. But what he did, he passed by on the other side. Instead of helping the person, he avoided the person and he didn't do something about it. And when Jesus was actually telling this story, I was just imagining if I'm the lawyer who were trying to put Jesus on test, how dare you tell that? Because why? For a priest or a pastor in our context, it's expected for you to help someone who's in need because you're a pastor. Who among you here na offend ka na sa isang pastor dahil, di ba, nagpipreach siya, tapos suddenly, he's not practicing what he's preaching. Di ba, kaya nga ikaw, lumipat ka ng church, ayoko na dyan kasi yung pastor namin nakaka-offend. Why? Because that's just a reality. If you're teaching the Word of God, if you're preaching the Word of God, it's expected for you to help someone who's in need. But what's interesting here, the priest didn't do something about it. Now, my question is this. Now, how about us? Whenever we encounter someone who's in need, ano pong ginagawa natin? Yes, we can preach, you know, we can teach the Word of God. You know, we can be so good here in church. But when we're outside, when someone who's in need, do we avoid them or do we do something about it? Why? Because in verse 32, Here's what happened. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. So may gumaya pa, okay? Parang, parang counterflow lang yan. Dahil may nag-counterflow na, ay, gagayahin ko na to, okay? Di ba parang, I want you to understand what a Levite is, okay? A Levite is someone who serves in the temple back then. And they were the selected tribe to serve the church. So in our time today, it's like the victory group leaders, our volunteers, our ushers, our tech ministry, our kids, church teachers, and all that. And what's interesting, he did the same. Instead of helping the person who's in need, what he did is he didn't do something about it. You know what I realize is this. We can do you know, we can be busy doing the work of God and miss out the heart behind it. You can be an usher here, a victory group leader here, a tech, or you know, you can help the church here. You can be good inside the church, but outside the church, you know, ay, ayoko dyan. Baka madamay pa ako. Why? Because, you know, sometimes our thinking is, Oh, it's not my problem. I don't want to get myself in trouble. It won't be beneficial for me. Why care? 
Di ba? Naisip niyo na ba yun na pag sinabi niya, ay, huwag ka na makialam dyan, baka madamay ka pa. Di ba? Ayahan mo na yung problema nila. You know, it's a sickness. It's a bystander effect. And worse, in our time today, because of smartphones, what we do is whenever someone is quarreling and all that, anong ginagawa natin? Ilabas ang camera, a video, ay, I like this, I got, uh, marami akong likes na makukuha dito. Nag-aaway na nga eh. Hindi ako galit, okay? Okay lang tayo, okay? But you know what? Today, let me encourage you as a church because we are recipients of God's compassion we ought to be an extension and reflection of His compassion. If you have experienced the grace, the mercy, and compassion of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you, we should be the one who's exemplifying it to this world. So it's no longer parang an issue na, ay, tutulungan ko ba to or hindi? Dinideserve niya ba to or hindi? No! Regardless, the person deserved the help or not. Because you experience the love of God unconditionally, then you're gonna help the person unconditionally. Can I challenge you to do this? If you have experienced Jesus Christ? Why? Here's what happened if we're gonna continue the story. Now, there's this another guy that I'm gonna introduce. But a Samaritan as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. What we need to understand, during their time, if you're a Samaritan, you're despised. You're a second-class citizen. A Jew and a Samaritan, they hate each other because the Samaritan back then, they intermarry a non-Jew. So they despise them. Kadiri kayo, mga Samaritan kayo. That's why if you remember the story when Jesus approached the Samaritan woman, she was shocked. Why are you talking to me? You're a Jew. Now here in this story, the Samaritan, okay, when he saw the guy who was half dead, he had compassion on him. The guy was a Jew. But he had a compassion. What I realize is this. There's something about seeing a situation. You can see a situation in a lens of frustration, of pride, and all that. Or you can see the situation in a lens of God's lens. Here, what we can see is he saw the guy and he had a compassion on that guy. That's why in verse 34, here's what he did. He went to him. Bound up his wounds, pouring on, on oil and wine. Then he set him on his own animal and brought, brought him to an inn and took care of him. He helped the person. Which means, compassion is not just an emotional thing na, ha, ah, kawawa ka naman, you know, mamamatay ka na, you know, na hold up ka, and all that. It's not just an emotion. When you experience compassion, when you have compassion, it moves you to sacrificial action. Yun yung ginawa ng Samaritan. Imagine this, he was on a journey. Maybe he is on a vacation, he's about to meet someone, or we don't know. But because he saw someone who's in need, who, were, who was half dead, and he, saw, he had compassion on that guy, it moved him. To help that person. Now my question is this. Ano ba yung mga nagiging excuse natin? Why do, di ba parang bakit di tayo tumutulong sa ibang tao? Di ba parang, ako minsan, uh, to be honest, sometimes I think, ah, ako nga, I have problems eh. I have own, ano mo, my own issues eh. Di ba? So why, why, why help them? I'd rather help my family. I'll start with my relatives. So why help those people na hindi naman connected sa akin? Or, you know, I'm so busy, I'm running this business, I have uh, personal issues and concern. Why help? Why, you know, bother to sacrifice for those people who's in need? What I realize is a lack of compassion can just easily justify it by saying I've got so many things going on. 
Dahil ang dami nating ginagawa, ginagawa nating excuse yon para hindi tumulong sa ibang tao. So can I just be honest? Okay, I'm gonna share a story, pero okay lang ba sa atin, sa atin lang? Okay lang? So, baka kasi judge niyo ako, okay? So, uh, this picture, uh, that guy, that's uh, Lester Korea, is one of our campus missionaries also, and that's uh, his wife. So, si Lester, uh, actually, uh, we've been friends since college. So, and during that time, we're not yet Christians, so alam niya lahat ng, ng alam mo yun, ng issues ko, yung mga ginawa namin ng college, and now we're, we're here doing the work of God. And actually, uh, last Wednesday, so here's my confession, okay? So last Wednesday, we decided to eat there in Market Market, in ano, uh, Fiesta Market, the one beside the parking lot, okay? Because we were trying to save up, so magtitipid kami, so we ate there, there's this food stall, uh, 65 pesos only, rice all you can, okay? So, sulit, so we're enjoying our food, we're eating the pares, okay, pares yung binili namin, okay? So, sarap na ito, we're talking, kasi ano eh, yung first language namin, Tagalog talaga, so ina-enjoy namin, bro, sarap na ito, the best to, 65 lang, you know, and unlimited rice. And then suddenly, there's these two kids begging for money. So, sabi niya, lumapit siya. Siyempre, hindi naging English yung beggar, di ba? Magulat ako, naging English. Hey, can I have some money? No, sabi niya, uh, <laughs> sabi niya, uh, kuya, pwede po maingin pera, uh, pambili lang po namin ng bigas. Okay. And here's my confession. When the, the kid was asking for money, in my mind, sindikato to. Baka pang sugal lang nito to. Or baka pang dota lang nito. Or... Sorry ah, meron bang hindi nakakaintindi ng English? Ay, ng English. Ang Tagalog dito. Okay, sige. So, lahat naman nakakaintindi. Good. So, I was I was judging the kid. Ah, parang, ano kayang gagawin niya? What will he do to the money? And all that. Uh, baka lang, ano, pangsugal niya lang. And all that. And then, you know what happened? Lester was moved. You know, no more question asked. What he did, he went to this stall, you know, on the, the one in, yung parang rotonda ng market, where the fruit stand is. Merong bigasan doon. What he did, he went there, bought, uh, I, I'm not sure if it is five kilos of rice, okay? And then he gave it to the kid. And then in my mind, I was eating the pares, and I was like, pastor pa man din ako, parang nakakahiya naman. <laughs> So, kumakain ako. So, si, si, si Lester, he's walking back to the table. Nangitin siya sa akin ganyan. Tapos, ako naman, tinignan ko siyang ganyan. I was looking to him then. Ah, kain, kain, kain. <laughs> and sometimes, it's a rea- reality for us, di ba? We make many excuses. We try to judge the person. Anong gagawin niya dyan, di ba? But you see, compassion has nothing to do with that. It's your personal desire to help a person regardless he will abuse you or what or you know he would do do uh, yung help mo gagamitin niya sa ibang bagay because it's your conviction from the lord so hindi niyo naman ako judge diba nagrepent naman ako okay and in case you're thinking alam ko yung iniisip niyo he's a pastor he's a full-time minister he should do that it's expected for him to do that. I'm excused because I'm just a member. You know, I'm just starting here in the church. <laughs> let me introduce to you, uh, introduce, let me share to you about this. Real Life Foundation. Real Life Foundation is our social responsibility arm here in the church. It's our compassion ministry. So just in case you're thinking, oh, I'm not a full-time minister, there's no room for me to serve, to be compassionate, to help the poor, and all that, mm, we have real-life foundation for you. Okay? What's interesting is because of this foundation, it helped us focus on what God calls us to do, which is to make disciples not here in the Philippines, but in every nation, but at the same time, we are not forgetting the poor. We are still socially responsible. That's why if you're thinking, ah, uh, I'm not available and all that, let me introduce you to this guy. Police Senior Inspector Nico Manakil. He's a team leader of PNP Special Action Force. Imagine, 
after the feeding program, he would lead the kids into the Bible study, into Bible study. And not only that, his team were in charge of the storytelling. Imagine these soldiers, you know, the muscle and all that. They will, you know, do the storytelling to the kids. Imagine the heart of our soldiers with the duty that they have here in our nation. They still get to serve the next generation and still be socially responsible. You, you know, I remember the story when they wanted to volunteer. They went here to our building. Okay, dahil sundalo sila, they brought with them their, ano, uh, what do you call that? M16 or Armalite or Carbine, na Carbine, Nux, parang Counter-Strike lang, you know, okay? So, they went here and our guards were alarmed. Okay, okay, raid ba to? Wala pong drugs dito, you know, let me, I'm just kidding. They were alarmed because, okay, w- uh, bakit may mga sundalo? And then they were looking, uh, Okay, Ate Shea. Ate Shea is the one in charge of our feeding program. So the guards called uh, Ate Shea. Siyempre, in Tagalog, sabi niya, ah, ah, ma'am, may naghahanap po sa inyo dito sa EN building. Mga armado po, ma'am. Okay? So, but kidding aside, again, I'm asking you, what's our excuse? What's our reason? Why? You know, last October 22, we did a medical mission. And there were Six doctors, two dentists, 18 nurses, one pharmacist, 32 non-medical volunteers. Imagine the profession of these people who help serve the poor. Because they have this compassion in their hearts, regardless the inconvenience, regardless the effort that they will need to put in that time, it doesn't matter. Because compassion requires sacrifice. And it will move you to do something. You know, I want to appreciate General Jojo Acosta and her daughter who is a doctor. They are a part of our church here. They are a member of our church. Imagine, yung profession niya, doctor siya. Diba, pwede niya pagkakitaan to, but what he did is, he just want to serve. He just want to be a blessing. Come to think of this. Ano yung binigay ni God sa'yo? What's your profession? Have you ever think na maybe the reason why God has blessed you because He wants you to be a blessing? The reason why you're successful today is because you know and you should admit that it's from the Lord. Wag mo nang antayin na, alam yun, pag naging mayabang ka, the Bible says, di ba? God opposes the proud. Wag mo nang antayin na maging kaaway mo si Lord. And He gives grace to the humble. So again, malamang iba sa inyo, mag email kay Pastor Reb, grabe tong campus minister, no? pinagalitan kami. <laughs> but again, what's our excuse? You know what? Whenever we help someone, you just don't know the impact it can create to that person. Who among you here, you have experienced a help from someone? Diba you were so grateful, you were so thankful to that person. When you were, alam mo yun, yung nasa dulo ka na ng, ng munti ka na mapakapit sa patalim. How do you say that in English? You were almost like that, okay? <laughs> naubusan na yun, nagahang na ako, eh. parang naubusan yung sugar ko, eh. okay? Diba yung moment na parang you don't know where to get uh, the tuition fee for your uh, son and all that. And then someone just approached you, you know, God told me to bless you and all that. Diba you were so grateful na, Lord, thank you because you sent this guy just to bless me and help me. That's why you just don't know how much impact you can create whenever you help someone. But here's what I realize, okay? Alam ko pa rin yung iniisip nyo. Some of you, you're still thinking, and if you'll be honest enough, Ang question is, why is it it's hard for me to be compassionate on someone who doesn't deserve help? Bakit ko tutulungan tong tao na to, iniloko ko? Why would I help this person? Eh, you know, I'd rather help my family, my relatives. Why this group of people? Why my neighbor? Right? Our tendency is to be selective. 
I'll just choose the people I want to be compassionate. But I want to end with this. You know, in Luke 10, 35, and the next day, this was the Samaritan, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying, take care of him. And whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Few thoughts. Number one, helping will really cost you. The question is, are you willing to pay the price? This is a good reminder for us about compassion. That's just a reality. It will cost us maybe our finances, our time, our effort, our energy. It's costly. Helping someone, it's costly. But in verse 36, Jesus asked the lawyer, So which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? So sino sa kanila? And then the guy said, he said, the one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, oh, you go and do likewise. Just show mercy to your neighbor, just be compassionate, and all that. But for us to do, to do this, for us to experience this, there's a need for us to have a revelation about the mercy of God. The reason why we're, you know, uh, we're having a hard time to be compassionate because we think they don't deserve it. But come to think of this. Do you deserve to be saved? Do we deserve the mercy of God? The compassion of God? The love of God? You know, the Bible says because of our sins, we were separated from God. And if we're a sinner... We have offended a God who's so holy, righteous, perfect. But the good news is this. While we were still sinners, Christ Jesus died for you and for me and paid the penalty of our sins showing His mercy, His compassion, and telling you and me, I love you regardless who you are, what you did in the past. And as you experience this mercy, this compassion, this love, I'm calling you my son and my daughter, and you should exemplify it to the world, proving them that you are my follower and you are my disciple. So to the, to the degree that we have experienced the mercy of God is the same degree we can be merciful and compassionate to the others. My question is this. How's your experience and encounter with the Lord? Have you experienced His mercy and His compassion? Because it's no longer a question whether you will help or not. Because once you have Jesus in your heart, it's natural. It will overflow. It will manifest because of the Holy Spirit residing in you. Can we all stand as we end in prayer? With all heads bowed and eyes closed, Lord, thank you, God, for tonight, God. We know that your presence is in this place and we know that you are speaking to us, Lord. There are things you are showing us that we need to surrender to you. And Lord, right now, God, I pray that you would prepare our hearts, Lord. Even this week, even in the next days, Lord, I pray, God, that you would give us an opportunity to be a blessing, to help someone, to be compassionate. You know what? I want to pray for some of you. If, you. if you are here and you know you just need to repent before the Lord because you have judged those people who were in need. And you are being convicted by the Holy Spirit. And you know na, Coach Brian, I just need to surrender this. And I want to be used by God, regardless of the situation. If that is you, with all heads bowed and eyes closed, why won't you raise your hands towards heaven so I can pray for you? Yes, 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 yes. Lord, thank you, God, for these people, Lord. Acknowledging, Lord, our issues, our concerns, our imperfections. Lord, even as we surrender this to you tonight, we know that you are near to us. Your grace is sufficient for us. 
Every time we feel so weak, Lord, you are our strength, Lord. And every time we will see, Lord, in the future people who are in need, Lord, I pray that you would give us the lens to see those people with the compassionate eyes, Lord. And with that, it will move us, Lord, to help them, Lord, regardless the situation and regardless our situation, because your desire for us is to be a blessing to many people, Lord. So I bless these people, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Last group of people I want to pray for is this. Actually, if you're going to look at the parable, if we're going to relate to the characters, we are the guy who's wounded and who's half dead. And the good Samaritan is Jesus. Because of our sins, because of our issues, that's why we're having to hard we are we're having a hard time to deal with other people. Because we're wounded because of our sin. And actually we are dead in our transgression. But the good thing is we have the great Samaritan and that is Jesus Christ. That's why tonight, for some of you, I'm gonna give you this opportunity to make this decision to surrender your life to Jesus. When I say surrender, you know, this is not religion. Because religion would say you na, ah, you need to do this for you to be saved. You need to be part of this church and all that. It's all about requirement. But when Jesus died for you and for me, it has something to do with relationship. He's offering a relationship with you so that you can be intimate with Him, so you can experience His love, His forgiveness, and His mercy. And I know you've been wanting to experience this. You've been desiring. You've been, you know, uh, asking and seeking God. And, you know, there's this void in your heart that only Jesus can fill. That's why with all heads bowed and eyes closed, and you just know in your heart that God is talking to you right now, and you need to surrender your life to Jesus. And I'm going to count one, two, three. One, you know, this will be the best decision that you're going to do in your life. It's not going to be easy. But one thing is for sure, if you have Jesus in your life, it will never be the same again. Two, you know, you don't need to think of uh, anong iisipin sa'yo ng tao or baka ma-persecute ako. I know God is talking to you right now. Just open your heart. Open your heart. Three, if that is you and you're saying, Coach Brian, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. Can you raise your hand so I can pray for you? Yes, God bless you. 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 Can we just give these people a hand for surrendering their life to Jesus? God bless you. God bless you. You know, you know what the Bible says? When there's one sinner who repents, the heaven is rejoicing. And I believe there's more of you who surrender your life to Jesus. That's why I'm going to challenge you so I can pray with you face to face. I can see you face to face. If you have raised your hand, can you come here in front of the stage? If you're saying, tonight, today is the day that the Lord has made. I'm surrendering my life to Jesus. Can you come here in front of the stage if you raise your hand? Come on. Come on, can we give them a hand? Come on, don't stop, don't stop. The heaven is rejoicing right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Meron pa ba? If you know in your heart you just need to surrender your life to Jesus, we're not in a hurry. Maybe you're still struggling. All you have to do is just come here in front of the stage and acknowledge, you know, I just need Jesus. Come on, there's more. There's more. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! Those who came here in front of the stage, can you look up here? Can I just say this? You know, saludo ako sa inyo. This is the best decision. It's not easy. May mga challenges pa rin tayo sa buhay. May mga concerns tayo pag natin sa bahay. 
But one thing is for sure, once you have Jesus in your heart, the Bible says, for anyone who is in Christ, the old is gone and the new has come. The way you see your challenges now is different because you have Jesus who will be the source of your joy, of your security, of your significance. So we're going to pray. Can you just repeat after me and put this prayer into your hearts? Father in heaven, thank you so much for your great love for me that you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, to pay the penalty of my sins. Tonight, I accept Jesus as my personal Lord, Master, and Savior. I declare that I have a relationship with Jesus. I live for His honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray for you, Lord. Thank you, God, for this group of people who surrender their lives to you, Lord. I pray that you would seal the salvation that they have experienced tonight. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will show your plan, Lord, in them, Lord, that you've been wooing them, that you've been pursuing them. And now that they have surrendered their lives to you, Lord, you're going to surprise them of your love, of your mercy, of the destiny that's waiting for them, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Again, can you give them a hand? You know, for those of you who came here in front, you know, this decision we take this seriously because we really, we really want you to help. Uh, we really want to help you grow your relationship with Jesus. That's why Junber is there. Later, after the service, can you just stay for a few minutes? He'll just explain something, the significance of our decision. Is that okay? Okay, let's just end in prayer. Lord, thank you, God, for tonight. Thank you, God, because we're serving a compassionate God, Lord. And Lord, I pray, God, that even as we go out from this assembly, Lord, I pray that you would give us a heart, Lord, to love our neighbors, to love those people who's in need, Lord, those people who are having a hard time to deal with, Lord, because we have experienced your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, Amen, amen and Amen.